Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hey guys, Zot here and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be getting you up to date on without a doubt the strongest healer right now, Mistweaver Monk. We've collaborated with Wildcard Gaming's very own healing god Looney to put this video together. Those of you that haven't heard of him, Looney is a previous BlizzCon champion who has had multiple high-end tournament show-ins, recently dominating the AWC Cup and finishing second place at 2019 BlizzCon. Considered by many one of, if not the best, multi class healer in the world. To kick this video off, let's do a quick recap on talent choices, establish a good default talent setup, and then cover any adaptations that you should make and why. Alright, so a good baseline looks like this Mist Wrap, Chi Torpedo, Manatee, Ring of Peace. Healing Elixirs, Summon Jade Serpent Statue, and Focus Thunder. There honestly isn't all that much in terms of adaptations here, and the times you will want to change these are very niche, but let's cover why and when. First off is on the level 30 row. Whilst Chi Torpedo is very strong for your own mobility, it's often the case where you don't need it, and if you're playing with melee classes, they can really make good use out of Tiger's Lust. So specking into this and giving your teammates that extra root break or freedom can really help with their pressure. But as mentioned, this is extremely situational. The only other real talent option you'll ever want to change is on the 60 row. Whilst Ring of Peace is standard and good in almost every scenario, in certain compositions, swapping to Song of Chi Ji can add that extra crowd control you need to close out the game. Again, same as before, now with PvP talents, let's start with a good baseline although there is a lot more variance when it comes to PvP talents. So for this, we have Chrysalis, Counteract Magic, and Zen Focus T. But let's discuss why we recommend these three default talents and when you'll want to make any changes to them. Chrysalis is our first recommended PvP talent and is one you'll never want to be without in any situation. Chrysalis is the main reason behind Monk's strength right now, reducing their cocoon's cooldown in conjunction with Burst of Life to 55 seconds. Counteract Magic is our second recommended PvP talent. This buffs your renewing mist healing by 135%, as long as that there is a magical debuff on the target. And with renewing being such a big part of your healing, this is a must have whenever you can get value out of it. Although there are times you won't be able to get value out of this talent. For example, melee cleaves will purposely play without Crucible of Flame Miner to deny you getting any value out of this talent at all. Zen Focus T is our third talent. This can very easily just be used in every matchup and gain good value, as it makes you immune to all interrupts for its duration. Anytime you're worried about getting kicked and losing the game, then this is going to be a must have. Okay, so now let's discuss when you'll want to divert from these talents. For those games where you're not going to get value out of Counteract, or you think you don't need Zen Focus T, then if the enemy have a melee, you'll more than likely want to pick up Grapple Weapon. Grapple Weapon is good against the majority of melees, with Ferals and Windwalker being the exception. Eminence is another great talent that you can always find use for. What Eminence does is it reduces the cooldown of your Transcendence by 20 seconds, meaning you can more easily either avoid crowd control or kite your enemies. So anytime you're at risk of getting focused, this is going to be your best talent in order to survive. Healing Spheres are a little more niche, but still a viable option. The only time that you'll ever want to pick these up is versus a Shadow Priest. You can heavily reduce their damage output by placing spheres all around your partners. Trust me, picking this up is well worth it versus Shadow. And our last option when it comes to PvP talents is a very niche talent, and that's Way of the Crane. Way of the Crane is good against one class in specific, and that's Boomkins, used most optimally as a way to break Root Solar Beam. Although the damage and healing is heavily nerfed, you can still pick this up in 2v2 when you really need that extra added damage, at the cost of both healing output 
and mana. Okay, so that's both our PvP talents and normal talents covered. Let's now move on to essences. As with patch 8.3, we saw the release of some new ones and even gained an extra minor slot at level 75. For your major essence, you have four main options. Vitality Conduit, Conflict and Strife, Memory of Lucid Dreams, or Crucible of Flame. Vitality Conduit is going to be the one that you'll get the most use out of, being great in almost every scenario, whether you're going to be the target yourself or if they're going to be hitting a teammate. Vitality Conduit acts as a pseudo spirit link and can be rotated with your cocoon to quickly save your teammates when you're unable to cast. Conflict and Strife is for those times when you're going to be getting focused and Vitality Conduit just doesn't cut it. Primarily, this is going to get used versus compositions like Rogue Mage who are looking to kill you inside of a stun. You purely take Conflict for the added versatility whilst you're stunned as it gives you access to Way of the Crane, which is essentially useless. When mana is the name of the game, then your best option is going to be Memory of Lucid Dreams as your major. Think compositions like Shadow Play that deal high consistent damage and don't really focus around setup damage. This is going to restore a high amount of mana and allow you to keep healing for longer to keep the game going. Whilst the final option when it comes to major is Crucible of Flame. It's very rare that you'll find yourself wanting this, but specifically in 2v2, you can use this for some added offensive pressure. For your minor essences, first you're going to want either Conflict or Vitality, whichever one you're not using as your major currently. To pair with that, you'll always want Seed of Eonar. This is just honestly very strong free passive healing that really adds up over the course of a game. And then for your third minor, you have a few options. Ever Rising Tide is going to be your best mana option, whereas Lucid Dreams will give you a small bonus to mana and even some added versatility. So it's very good defensively. And lastly is the Spirit of Preservation Minor Devout Spirit. This isn't fantastic, but it grants you 10 corruption resistance. So if you have good corruptions, this then allows you to wear even more. Our next section is going to be gearing. In this section, we're going to be covering stat priority, trinkets, azurites, and also everybody's favorite new addition to the game, corruption. Starting off with stat priority, nothing has changed. You still want versatility and mastery above all else, with haste being okay and critical strike worth avoiding. Trinkets have become more and more of an integral part of your gearing, with some trinkets holding insane power. The Forbidden Obsidian Claw is one of these, and it's absolutely insane. Not only does this trinket offer so much offensively, but on use, it restores a huge amount of mana. Great for sustain, great for damage, and great for pressure. Yeah, just go out and get one now. The Forbidden Obsidian Claw drops from one of the earlier bosses inside of the new raid, Mount. The other trinket you might want to consider on Mistweaver to pair with your claw is the Revitalizing Voodoo Totem. The Voodoo Totem is used as a very strong single target heal that can even be used whilst you're locked out. You can use it before CC chains or just in any situation where you need some instant healing. Some other options for when you need more defensive capabilities are either a Safeguard or Battlemaster. Safeguard can be great to keep you alive in stuns, and Battlemaster is just good all around when you're getting focused. Alternatively, if you have high versatility percent corruptions, you can wear either an insignia or a badge to increase your overall versatility. Moving on to Azerite now, the best trait setup you can achieve is going to be Free Burst of Life combined with Free Heart of Darkness. Burst of Life adds a huge burst of instant healing after your cocoon expires. Despite the cooldown reduction not stacking, the healing from this trait just makes it the best hands down. Heart of Darkness, on the other hand, is not nerfed in PvP like all other traits are by 50%. This means you're going to be getting huge passive bonus to all of your secondary stats. If you're unable to obtain Heart of Darkness though, a decent alternative is going to be Secret Infusion, giving you again a nice boost to selected stats when using your Thunder Focus T. Alright, so obtain this trait setup you're going to have to complete the new raid as all three pieces are drops from inside, with the Helm coming from Raden. The Gibberin Moor comes with Heart of Darkness, Burst of Life, and one exit strategy, which is also very nice to have. The Shoulders, on the other hand, are a drop from the final boss and Zoth. The Pauldrons of the Great Convergence have Burst of Life and Heart of Darkness once again. Then finally for Chess, the best option is going to be from Vexiona, the Dark Heart Robe, again having your two preferred traits. 
Up next, we've got everybody's favorite new addition to the game, Corruption. Insane RNG, balanced damage, and just all around fun. Healers, when it comes to Corruptions, don't really have any specific healing Corruptions in PvP per se. Taking this into account, the best Corruptions right now for a Mistweaver Monk are going to be passive percent increases to your favorite stats. So, primarily versatility and to a lesser extent mastery. Ultimately though, the best Corruption is going to be versatile, as this just provides a huge chunk of Versa Amp, which affects procs like Conflict and also Lucid Dreams. The proc Versa from Surgeon Vitality is also not too bad, but will only gain use when you're getting focused. Whilst the Mastery Alternatives Honed Mind or Masterful are a little weaker, but good alternatives if you're unable to get either of the versatility corruptions. Okay, now with our talents and PvP talents sorted, a good idea on what essences and what gear to equip, now let's talk playstyle. What is it you want to be doing when inside of Arena? Mistweavers inherently are not that great at stopping crowd control. Many other healers have ways of dealing with it. For example, Restoration Charms have Sheer, Grounding and Tremor, Priests have Premonition, and Druids can obviously shift forms. Monks, however, don't really have any tools other than their long cooldown crowd control, which can often be better used otherwise. This means that your positioning is key. As a monk, you should always be near a pillar, so that you're easily able to avoid incoming CC. When sacrificing your position to secure crowd control yourself, or make aggressive plays, you should always be ready to get in and get out as quickly as possible, utilizing your mobility. Positioning can also be used as a tool to delay or make swaps onto yourself a lot harder, and healing a lot easier. Attempting to be as far away as possible from your enemies can make their moves a lot more telegraphed, so always try to build distance from your enemies. Mobility is one of Mistweaver's biggest strengths, having two roles in the form of Chi Torpedoes and even a portal from your Transcendence. Transcendence is key to a lot of things. You'll rely on this to get out of sticky situations, kite enemies and even avoid crowd control. Although, positioning your portal and making sure you're in range is something you always need to be wary of. And a common mistake newer monks make is forgetting to re replace your transcendence after you use it, or even just outranging it. For example, having a portal behind a pillar can be a great way to easily achieve line of sight from your enemies, making avoid an incoming crowd control such as polymorph, fear or even freezing traps a lot easier. Transcendence is also your main way to escape when being trained. Transferring away from melees can buy you a few seconds before they're able to reconnect to enable you to then heal yourself up, especially on maps with a Z axis, allowing you to jump down and portal up, so always look to take advantage of this. Chi Torpedo is your other form of mobility, and it's incredibly powerful even having a speed increase attached to it. Chi Torpedo's main use is going to be of course kiting your enemies, but there are a few tips to help with this. First and foremost though, you need to make sure you have a cancel or a roll macro. This then allows you to easily cancel your roll at any point you want. Now trust me on this, there has been so many times I've witnessed new or lesser experienced monks, myself included, roll past their target and then have to use a second roll to again come back or worst case scenario, never reach the guy at all. This just gives you a lot more control over your roles. Anyway, your Chi Torpedo is your main source of mobility, quickly enabling you to build distance from your opponents or quickly reposition. Be careful when using Chi Torpedo though, as to not get caught out in the open with no mobility left, or transcendence to quickly escape. A good example of this happening would be if you use two charges to escape a warrior, only then for him to use Heroic Leap and reach you instantly. Don't neglect the movement speed you get from this either. A great tip you can do is using the cancel or roll macro from above to kite around smaller pillars, just utilizing the speed increase instead. Mistweavers are a shadow of their former self when it comes to damage. Now with Crane not really being a thing, you no longer primarily assist your team with damage, but this doesn't mean that you can't assist them offensively at all. When playing with any melee, it's very important that you assist your team by keeping up your Mystic Touch, which is of course your 5% damage buff to all physical damage. Now, there are multiple ways that you can do this. The safest way is with Crackling Jade Lightning from range. Alternatively, all of your melee attacks will also apply this debuff, along with Spinning Crane Kick applying it to all targets here. 
making this your most efficient way of applying the Mystic Touch debuffs to multiple stacked up targets. Also, as a Mistweaver in a lot of compositions, it's going to be up to you to secure crowd control, utilizing your mobility to quickly go in, in cap a healer into a leg sweep, and then quickly get out. Depending on your composition and situation, you can also use your stuns onto the DPS to help set up kills. Another great way to assist your team is with your Ring of Peace. This can be a fantastic way to counter enemy positional defensive cooldowns. Things like Urban Wall Totem, Dome of Light, or even Anti-Magic Zone. Placing a well-timed Ring of Peace can completely negate these cooldowns altogether. Or, if there is no positional defensive to counter, you can simply use Ring of Peace to help your teammates connect, or stop enemies retreating, or even as a way to knock enemies down on Z-axis maps. Now, this is a big one. When playing Mistweaver, it is incredibly easy to spend your whole mana bar within a few seconds, if you're not playing correctly. Using mana inefficient healing methods will result in mana being one of your most common lose conditions. There is, however, a few tips you can work on to improve on this. First is mana T usage. Mana T makes all of your heals cost 50% less mana for 12 seconds on a 1.5 minute cooldown. Ideally, you'll want this up whenever you're going to have to do a lot of healing and whilst it's up, really make use out of it. Getting crowd controlled or interrupted on your manatee can be very detrimental. So ideally wait until you're on DR and interrupts are down or you have your aura mastery available. Manatee is not the only ability you can use to improve your mana efficiency though. Thunder Focus T is going to be just as important. This can be used either on enveloping for some insane single target pump healing or on vivify for some smaller but completely mana free healing. Try to avoid using this on renewing mist altogether. Not overhealing is also an integral part of managing your mana efficiency. Soothing mist when combined with your jade serpent statue does some extremely efficient healing. So if you don't need to pump out the healing to top your partners, just let your soothing mist and renewing mist do the work. You can also save even more mana by making sure to maximize your healing elixirs. These are mana free personal healing, so do not neglect them. And lastly is always looking for drinks. Mist Weavers can actually secure drinks quite easily with the help of their team using their mobility or transcendence. Life Cocoon should be used early when the target is still stable on health, and often because of its short cooldown and healing once Life Cocoon expires because of the burst of life Azerite trait. Life Cocoon can also be used to counter certain cooldowns or setups from the enemy team whilst they have offensive cooldowns up. For example, Touch of Death, Vendetta or Combustion. Perhaps the best time to use Life Cocoon though is to use it preemptively before getting caught into a CC chain. This will help your team a ton since you'll be able to save other cooldowns and trinkets while you sit through the CC. Revival is a a three minute long cooldown that does some moderate healing but its main strength lies in the fact that it dispels everything from yourself and your teammates resulting in this ability having multiple uses. Revival is extremely powerful versus dot classes like Shadow Priest and Boomkins as it acts as a full reset. Revival can also be used to heal targets in Smoke Bomb, Shadowy Jewel, and even those out of line of sight. As long as they're in range, they'll receive the heal and dispel. Fortifying is a monk's wall ability. It will buff your health and reduce your damage taken. A great time to use this ability is when you're out of other cooldowns and know you're about to be stunned. Alternatively, Fortify and Be Brew can be used to increase the healing of your life cocoon. As this ability is now based off your percent health, it results in an even bigger absorb. Alright then guys, Guys, that's going to bring this Mistweaver Monk 8.3 update to an end. Hope this was useful and as always be sure to plus school if you enjoyed and if you do have any more questions don't be afraid to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.